An American singer Mary Melvin's performance of the Indian national anthem has taken everybody by surprise. She sang India's national anthem in the presence of the Prime Minister and the Indian diaspora at the Ronald Reagan Center in Washington, D.C. She later greeted the Prime Minister with a namaste and went on to touch his feet out of respect. Well, I'm just so honored to be here. The Prime Minister is such a wonderful and kind man, and it was just a sincere honor to be a part of his state arrival visit this week, to, to have been with him in New York, and certainly to honor him tonight singing the Indian National Anthem. I loved hearing the crowd sing the anthem. You could hear the passion in all of their voices, and so a true honor to be here tonight. We're crossing over to CNN News 18 and Siddhant Mishra for more. You know, Siddhant, one of the things that's being talked about is the interaction between singer Mary Milvin and the Prime Minister. Tell us more about what took place. Look, this entire state visit of the Prime Minister, you know, has is, is, is completely transformational. You know, the way United States used to look at India, perhaps maybe in early 2000 or late 90s, and the way United States... Uh, you know, uh, look at India now. You know, it, it has been, a, it has completely been a transformational journey. And perhaps this particular visit, the state visit of Prime Minister, is significant with regards to the kind of agreements that both the countries have signed. You know, where in their, particularly in defense, particularly in the in the field of semi semiconductors, uh, particularly with uh, with investments that India has attracted. And perhaps the Indian companies, those who have invested or are going to invest in in U.S. and, and creating jobs uh, for the people of United States, maybe uh, Air India placing uh, orders, uh, uh, aircraft orders, or uh, Starlight investing in in, in in United States. So you know, uh, you know, India India's movement has arrived, and it's not just U.S. but entire world uh, realizes it. Uh, uh, from hardcore diplomacy to the to the touch of soft power, Prime Minister Modi has carried it very well on his shoulders, and this is perhaps the reason that whether it's Kennedy Center, whether it's White House, whether it's uh, diaspora engagements, whether it's meeting with the CEOs from Elon Musk to Sundar Pichai uh, to the uh, to to the think tanks in United States, you know, all have welcomed Prime Minister Modi, and perhaps all could see the vision of Prime Minister Modi when it comes to comprehensive global strategic partnership between the two countries. Also, importantly, that, that day when Prime Minister Modi was delivering his speech uh, in the U.S. Congress, he highlighted that the partnership between the two countries is to serve the world. And he called it global comprehensive strategic partnership. And that perhaps establishes the rising clout of India, the rising importance of India, and how uh, how transformational this journey has been, where U.S. has has been convinced or perhaps has has agreed 
uh, uh, through a bipartisan route to transfer technology to India. Now, India's moment has arrived because India is going to make semiconductor chips. India is also going to make jet engines. India is also going to make make drones. And and it would this particular visit would 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 uh, pull a uh, lot of uh, investments and uh, technology uh, uh, into the Indian defense industrial uh, defense industry, and that is perhaps the biggest leap that defense industry has always t- uh, has taken ever. Also, answering the accord that has been signed for the mm-hmm. space collaboration between NASA and ISRO is landmark, and we ha- and 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 going by what White House release says. That by 2024, India is going uh, to send astronauts in NASA's air, airspace, uh, maybe to Mars or Moon or even beyond. So you know that level of collaboration in critical and emerging technology, you know, is 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 is, is something which America does only with important nations, the nations which are important strategically, the nations which uh, with uh, with whom America shares values. And mostly these nations are NATO countries. But if America is doing uh, such level of degree of collaboration with country outside NATO, then then it then it it establishes the importance of that country, and that country is India. And America also realizes that how important the free and open, free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific is. And this is the reason that America believes that if America wants free trade to flow in Indo-Pacific, if America wants stability of Indo-Pacific, if America wants Indo-Pacific uh, to be inclusive, then mm-hmm. for that, America needs partnership with India. And not just American government, maybe the Biden administration, but look at the bipartisan uh, uh, you know, engagement with Prime Minister. You know, he, he was there uh, to deliver a speech in the U.S. Congress, perhaps, uh, you know, a few leaders, world leaders, those who have done it for the second time. And the kind of welcome he has received, both from the Democrats and Republicans, you know, they were t- taking selfies uh, with the Prime Minister at the U.S. Congress House, and they were writing, uh, they're posting it on Twitter, and Prime Minister uh, thanking each one of them personally on Twitter. So it talks about that whether this administration remains in, in U.S., whether this administration goes out of power in U.S., but the relationship and the bond that both countries have 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 arrived uh, or or perhaps have developed is going to last long back to you. absolutely siddhant now when it comes to the investment deals that have been made could you give us a bit of a timeline on those deals and when exactly we're going to be seeing investments look you know mou mou's memorandum of understanding has always been a start of 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 perhaps any investment process but since these MOUs are being signed at the time of the Prime Minister's state visit. It perhaps carries a lot of uh, importance and, 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 and also, in a way, surety that these investments are going to come in India, uh, maybe not today, tomorrow, but sometime soon. Uh, semiconductor is, 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 is one key uh, sector where India's movement has arrived. India, uh, India's scenario has arrived. Uh, you know, uh, China has worked a lot over the years in semiconductor, and in fact, China has gotten into the supply chains uh, all across the world, and 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 that has perhaps become problem for the Western country and whole of the world when it comes to the supply chain of chips, uh, semiconductors. So one is the Taiwan, which is right now supplying, and the other destination could be India. Maybe not today, but in in years to come. By 2030, India is going to be the market of 100 billion dollar or uh, dollars for 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 semiconductors and 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 its product. So so you know that potential has been realized by United States. Three of the major companies: Micron, Applied Materials, uh, Applied Materials, uh, Applied Materials, and one other country. They all have committed, pledged their, uh, their, their their investment in India. And then defense, we all know the kind of, uh, you know, uh, transformation that has taken place. You know, now we are going to, uh, India is going to produce jet engines, predator drones, armored vehicles, whatnot, uh, under the Make in India uh, umbrella. So-